A study course based on the book Reversing Hermon by Michael S. Heiser. Chapter 2, The Watchers. Must we believe the book of Enoch? No, we do not believe the book of Enoch because it is a fanciful depiction of popular mythology. It was never in the canon of Scripture except in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. But we do read the book of Enoch because it is part of the Jewish cultural and literary background to the Bible. And some New Testament writers quote from it. Furthermore, First Enoch informs us on how ancient readers understood the Bible. Here is our hypothesis regarding the canon. Second Temple Jewish writers understood and preserved the original supernaturalist backstory from Mesopotamia, a quotation from the book, page 23. Now, this includes the parts of First Enoch which New Testament writers assume or include in their books. We shall illustrate this further. Thirdly, we accept into our canon of Scripture only those books which meet the criteria of, first, apostolic authorship, or, secondly, apostolic approval, and, thirdly, approval by all Christian churches' agreement. Now, we often talk about the Second Temple period, so let's consider for a moment the biblical temples. We include Eden from the time of creation until the Great Flood, when God dwelt in the garden with his creatures. Then there was the time of the building of altars from the flood until the exodus from Egypt. Then was built the tabernacle in use from the exodus until the time of Solomon in the 10th century A.D. Solomon then built the first temple, which endured until the 6th century B.C.E., when it was destroyed by the Babylonians. After the return of the people to the land and the coming of Ezra, until 70 A.D., we had the second temple. From the time of Jesus until the present, we talk about a spiritual temple, for all Christian believers are living stones in this spiritual temple unto God. Many believe that there will be a third temple from the time of Jesus' return through the millennium, and then there will be the everlasting temple when God will once again dwell amongst his people under a new heaven on a new earth. Let's try to summarize our position on the place of Enoch in the history of the Bible. We begin with a true history based on absolute reality from all time past, resulting in a factual world. However, we human beings have forgotten much of that history, that is, the ancient history from preliterate times. Nevertheless, there was the Mesopotamian oral history and much of its written mythology, which include early Israelite history. This leads us to the Second Temple Israelite oral and written history, which includes the Book of Enoch and much other literature. However, we now have a true Bible inspired from God, which retains the true part of the oral and written history. Now, who were the Archai rulers mentioned in First Enoch? First Enoch chapter 6 verse 7 speaks of the Archai. These are the names of their ruling ones, Semiazah, he was their ruling one, 
These are their rulers, their archai over tens. We have here the participle of the verb archo, translated ruling ones, as well as the plural noun archai, meaning rulers. These equate to the Hebrew sons of God, which in Aramaic were called watchers, but then translated into Greek as rulers. Both the Greek Old Testament and the Greek New Testament often translated angels or rulers. For example, in Romans chapter 8, we have the phrase, Neither angels nor rulers can separate us from the love of God. Question here, does this mean good angels and evil rulers, or that the rulers are angels? In Colossians chapter 2, we read that Jesus Christ has disarmed the rulers and authorities. And in the epistle to the Ephesians, in the heavenly places, far above every ruler and authority and power and dominion, again speaking of a class of spirit beings who rule over nations. And in chapter 3, they're called the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Where do these heavenly places begin? Well, at ground level and upwards. And then in chapter 6, against the rulers, the cosmic powers over this present darkness, the spiritual forces of evil. Although the sons of God called watchers who sinned in Genesis chapter 6 have now been consigned to hell, yet the class of angelic beings over the nations do include fallen sinful rulers. This is why in 1 Corinthians 15, we read that Jesus Christ will one day rule over the earth, destroying every ruler and every authority and power, all his enemies, before he turns the kingdom back over to the Father. Now, regarding the book of Enoch, it consists of several sections written during the 3rd century BCE, through the 1st century CE. Some portions may date from the 5th century BC. We believe it was written in Aramaic, or possibly both Aramaic and Hebrew, and then translated into Greek and Ethiopic, sometimes called Ge'ez. Ethiopians, of course, believe that it was written first in Ethiopic. It was widely copied and read in Jewish communities across the Greek and Roman empires. And in the 20th century, large portions of First Enoch were found in Aramaic amongst the Dead Sea Scrolls, which are now widely available. So, many New Testament passages employ words, phrases, ideas, and legends drawn from First Enoch and similar Second Temple period writings. One notable passage in the book of Jude that speaks of the Lord coming with ten thousands of his holy ones, his angels, is clearly drawn from Enoch 1.9 or a similar source. Now, one of the major themes of the book of Enoch is that of a coming judgment day when the righteous one will appear, when the sinners who deny the name of the Lord of spirits will be kept for the day of affliction and distress. On that day, the chosen one will sit upon the throne of glory. Who is this chosen one? Who is this righteous one? According to the Gospel of Luke, the rulers scoffed at Jesus, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. And in the book of Acts, the righteous one whom you have now betrayed and murdered, that is, the titles chosen one and righteous one 
were already applied to the coming Messiah in the book of Enoch. Likewise, the title Son of Man. Recall the incident when Jesus forgave the sins of a lame man lowered through the roof and then said, In order that you may know that I, the Son of Man, have authority to forgive sins, rise up, pick up your bed, and walk. So we read in the book of Enoch, There I saw one who had a head of days, and his head was white like wool, and with him there was another whose face had the appearance of a man. And two verses later, This is the Son of Man, who has righteousness and with whom righteousness dwells. Clearly a reference to Daniel chapter 7, where Yahweh is depicted as a very ancient person on one throne, and on a second throne, a human being to whom will be given the everlasting kingdom. So then, in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus says, Know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And then in chapter 21, They will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Thus Jesus himself took the title Son of Man from the book of Enoch, applying it to both his first coming and his second coming. What then are watchers? According to Daniel, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven. Obviously, there are holy watchers who dwell in the heavens and who brought a message, making them angels, that is, messengers. The term watcher, ir in Aramaic, means a watchman or, by application, a guardian angel. In Daniel, they are said to be holy, that is, some watchers remained good angels. In Enoch, chapters 6 through 16, we read about watchers who sinned against God in four ways. First, by abandoning their realm to enter into the human domain, revealing hidden knowledge to human beings, and mating with human women, with whom they fathered giants who terrorized the world. Thus, Enoch chapter 6 is a commentary on Genesis chapter 6. We read, It came to pass when the sons of men had increased that in those days there were born to them fair and beautiful daughters. Enoch 6.2, And the angels, the sons of heaven, saw them and desired them. And they said one to another, Come, let us choose for ourselves wives from the children of men, and let us beget for ourselves children. Here Enoch calls them angels, which is a term also used in Jude, verse 6, and in Second Peter 2, 4. Here they are called sons of heaven, recalling the phrase sons of God from Genesis 6, 2. Now, what is the connection with Mount Hermon? At the time of Jesus, with the help of King Herod, the Romans had built a sanctuary to the god Pan at the foot of Mount Hermon, where there was a grotto and a flowing river. Carvings from the sanctuary of Pan remain to this day. In First Enoch we read the words of the watchers. Let us all swear an oath and bind one another with curses, so not to alter this plan, but to carry out this plan effectively. Then they all swore together, and all bound one another with curses to it. And they were in all two hundred, and they came down upon the summit of Mount Hermon. We read in Dead Sea School 4Q Enoch A these two terms, curse, 
the Aramaic word is cherem, the same in Arabic and Wolof languages, and the name of the Mount Hermon based on the same triliterate root, cherem, giving us the name of the mountain, Hermon. It is the same triliteral root in Aramaic and in Hebrew. Well, the watchers also committed other sins. We read, And they taught the humans charms and spells, and they showed them the cutting of roots and trees. And Azazel taught men to make swords and daggers and shields and breastplates in order to make war and the art of making up the eyes and beautifying the eyelids, leading to female seduction. And there was great impiety and much fornication, the casting of spells, astrology, and the shedding of blood. The term spells in the Greek version is the Greek word pharmakeia, often translated sorcery, which includes the use of drugs and of magic. Well, what were some of the implications then for humanity? Well, fallen angels have an agenda, and they have it to this day. First, to become like the Most High God, which was Satan's primary sin, in order to rule over the earth for their own glory. To do so, they must suborn human beings to do their bidding. They do this so they rule over humans through astrology and seeking to depopulate nations by warfare, by sexual perversion, and by pharmaceutics, the drug trade. They hope, thereby, to delay the final day of judgment, which they know is coming, Therefore, to prevent the coming and the return of the Son of Man. However, these fallen heavenly rulers are not the demons. According to First Enoch, four archangels instructed Noah and bound Azazel. Michael, Gabriel, Cyril, and Uriel looked down from heaven and saw the mass of blood that was being shed on the earth and all the iniquity that was being done on the earth. And then the Most High, the Great and Holy One, spoke, Say to Noah in my name, Hide yourself, and reveal to him the end which is coming, because the whole earth will be destroyed. Bind Azazel by his hands and his feet, and throw him into the darkness. First Enoch then reveals that the souls of giants became the demons. Enoch chapter 15 says, The giants who were born from body and flesh will be called evil spirits on the earth. The spirits of the giants do wrong. They are corrupt. They attack, fight, and break on the earth, causing great sorrow. However, they eat no food, do not thirst, and are not observed. That is, humans cannot see them. The term used here in Greek, evil spirits, pneumatoponira, is the same term used in the Gospel of Luke and in the book of Acts providing a linguistic connection between Enoch and the New Testament. This leads to the Christian doctrine of deliverance. You Christian believers, you hold authority from the Lord Jesus Christ to expel evil spirits, both from persons and places. Use this authority often. When you enter a place, you can silently pray, ordering all evil spirits to leave. Now, some ask, are watchers, the archai, still in the world? Well, let's consider rulers before the flood. We read in Enoch, the rulers, archai, 
saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, each choosing for himself. And then the rulers, Archai, who have sinned, will be judged and condemned at the end of times. And in verse 19, Uriel said to me, These are the rulers, Archai, who have led men astray and taught them magic and enchantments. Consider those first rulers, called angels, after the flood. The book of Jude in the New Testament reads, The angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. And then Peter wrote, God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment. And now the new rulers, the sons of God, after the flood. We read in the book of Deuteronomy, When the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, that is, their lands, when he divided mankind, he fixed the borders of the peoples according to the number of the sons of God, translated in Greek as the angels. And in the same chapter, they stirred him to jealousy with strange gods, that is, foreign gods. This title, Sons of God, we glean from the Dead Sea Scrolls copied in the 2nd century BCE over a thousand years before the oldest existing Hebrew copies from which our Bibles are translated. This is why most English versions read according to the sons of Israel in the Masoretic text from the 10th century CE. This change was made by the rabbis for theological purposes. And then let's look at the failed rulers called gods from after the flood. Here we read from Psalm 82. God, Elohim, has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods he holds judgment. I said you are gods, sons of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, as men you shall die and fall like any human prince. The divine council we understand to be created spirit beings who report to the God Elohim. However, the term translated gods in the plural is the same word Elohim, meaning divine beings who are not the one Elohim. Here, though, they are called sons of the Most High, that is, these angels whom God created. However, he did not father them. Are watchers, are highs still in the world? Well, yes, for we struggle against rulers in high places. The book of Romans says that neither angels nor rulers will be able to separate us from the love of God. Are these rulers angels, or are angels the good ones and the rulers the evil ones? And in the epistle to the Ephesians, we wrestle against the rulers, Archai, against the authorities, the cosmic powers over this present darkness. Yes, there are evil rulers in place to this day. However, a time will come when Jesus will deliver the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every ruler and every authority and power, that is, the rulers in the heavenly places, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet, mainly the angelic enemies. Well, 
Your assignment for next time, then, is to read in the book Reversing Hermon, Chapter 3, titled The Mesopotamian Apkalu, The Watchers and the Nephilim, pages 37 through 52, and then visit the website reversinghermon.site.